80% of patients have actually self-diagnosed themselves. They've actually come across it through their own, their own research. They've struggled with this condition since puberty, the teenage years, been told to lose, lose weight, done many different things, dietary strategies, and things don't change. They've seen healthcare professionals, exercise people, and nothing's really changing. They get frustrated and they begin to realize something's not adding up over here. Nowadays, there is increased awareness out there on the internet and there's information out there, and patients begin to find their way to it and come across that term lipedema. And most patients really truly self-diagnose themselves with it. And I call it the aha moment. When they, they go on the internet and they, they start seeing all these different things that start to add up, and all of a sudden light bulbs are going off. It's like, oh my God, do I have this condition? And most of the time when they think they have it, I gotta tell you, they actually do have it. And it's not that difficult to, to self-diagnose. So what is it based on? A characteristic look to lipedema. Lipedema um, has a certain look to it where you get the circumferential distribution of the fat and swelling around the entire leg unit. And there's different stages, one through four, and there's different patterns. Common pattern, it, it wraps around the entire leg from the outer buttock area all the way down to the ankle area. In that pattern, Typically, the upper arm has become involved circumferentially again, all the way around there. And then some people get also involvement of the upper buttock area, the pelvic girdle as a wrap strand. And many of those patients don't have involvement of the calf and ankle area. They have more of a triangulated appearance to them. So it's a certain characteristic look. Then you start to add to it the symptoms that can go along with lipedema. One is commonly pain, but not always. It could be excruciating or it could be pretty much nothing nothing at all. Typically a sensitivity to pressure. People say when I when I get a massage, when a dog jumps on me or somebody touches me, it's more sensitive. Sometimes it's more of a tingling or burning pain. Sometimes it's more of a heaviness and achiness. Swelling is common. Typically it's kind of always there. Sometimes it goes up and down during the day. Easy bruisability is common. And the majority of patients but not all, but not all have a history of hyperflexibility of their joints. And when I ask that question, I'll say, oh yeah, you know, I was more flexible when I was growing up. I could bend my fingers back or I could do the split because that goes along with variation of what we call Ehlers-Danlos. And then now we add to that a few other things. One is family history. Lipedema almost always has family history. Uh, we call autosomal dominant. We pick up the gene from the mother, the mother's side, or equally infrequently from the father's side of the family. And the father may be carrying it in equal frequency. Half the time, the father may be carrying it, but not expressing it. So I rarely have seen men that are actually expressing it, and you're actually seeing lipidium in the, in the male. So you have to many times look at the females on his side, his sisters, or his mother, and go generations back with things. It's the way it looks, it's the symptoms that I just ran through, those four symptoms. Sometimes some other symptoms like brain fog or leaky gut syndrome, and then the family history that goes along with it too. It's not that difficult to diagnose in yourself or in others that are around you.